Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an educational style video about roly polies, as you can see here. Um, and hopefully you like these memes because there is more to come. <laughs> so, anyways, let's get on to it. First of all, the, why I love roly polies, okay? Whenever I was younger, okay, like even before grade school, I kept roly polies like in little containers and I'd feed them water and everything like that. And I loved them. They're like one of the easiest things to care for. They eat about anything and they, well, I mean, they might, might be able to kind of tickle you. I don't know for sure if they're actually biting, but like it, it does not hurt. I mean, I would not consider that a bite at all. And like, to tell you, like, they eat about anything, I mean, I just went outside and picked up leaves, some dirt, some sticks, uh, I think there were some, like, nuts or something like that around the ground, or stuff like that, threw all those in there, they, they ate about everything, I mean, it's super easy to take care of. Uh, they even would go and eat, like, uh, our pet food that was outside, so I mean, like, every so often you could throw, like, a piece of dry food in there for them to, a little treat. But they are also so easy to find. Like, quite literally, if you flip over a log or a flower pot or really anything, you'll probably find some. And this might be just me, but I feel like they are probably the cutest crustacean in the world. I mean, they are just adorable. Uh, and they can roll to a ball. I mean, what else could you want? I'm like... What other things can roll into a ball? Like an armadillo, I guess? <laughs> Most other things do not. So, they're just really adorable. So, let's move on. So, some common names that you might know. So, I think most people know the name Roly Poly. Uh, also, Pillbug is a pretty uh, normal one. To, yeah. So, Woodlice, Woodlouse. Uh, I've heard Potato Bug and Doodle Bug, too, and while I was looking up common names, I also found a Reddit page where they were talking about uh, pill bugs and roly polies, and someone happened to call them Micro Armadillos, and I thought that was wonderful. I thought it was hilarious. So, Micro Armadillos, if you uh, feel like it. <laughs> oh, and this picture here is from, if you've been on my Twitter, you'd see that I've been reading the uh, Green World Z. And this picture here is from that. <laughs> they get a pet giant pill bug, and it is adorable. I actually started reading Green World Z just because of this picture, so I had to add it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think those are all the names I've heard of them. So, scientific classification. I'm not going to go through all of these, there's a few that I would like to uh, touch on. So, of course, Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Arthropoda, uh, Subphylum uh, Crustacea, so they're crustaceans. Uh, all these other ones, uh, Order is probably kind of important, I feel like. Uh, Isopoda, they're isopods. And, yeah, all the ones don't really make that much difference. This is their full classification, or at least the fullest I could find. And... The one that we're going to be looking at uh, for most of this is the common pill bug, which is Armadillidium uh, vulgari. I, I think that's how you said. You know, I could move myself a second so you could see the whole thing. But yeah, this is going to be the common pill bug that, like, at least I find around my house that I'm going to be talking about mostly. And before we move on just like look at the picture of it and kind of keep an idea of what it looks like colored and stuff because I have an anatomy of it and what you want to pay attention to is the back side here where it has tons of these little plates and then the thorax here has bigger plates and you can also see the head is attached to the top th uh, the first so anyways let's move on so here is the anatomy Okay, so first, of course, they have two large antennae here. They got two eyes, and then they have seven pairs of jointed legs. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. And 
their uh, their head is fused with the first segment of the thorax. So right here. That's why I wanted you guys to look at that. So this is one segment right here, their head with the first segment. Then the perion. Uh, I'm probably going to butcher some of these names. Anyways, but there is seven segments there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then the abdomen here is five segments. And what I told you, we can go back to the last one. You see here at the very back of the pill bug, it has smaller segments here. So that is what the five segments are. And these other things don't really matter that much. I don't really know what the exopods or uropods are. Uh, yeah, I tried to look it up and there wasn't a ton of stuff I could find on it. So there's something there. They're named. They're not that important to this. And then we have a picture of a pill bug curl up into a ball. So like probably the cutest thing to do. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, also I have a picture of their underside later on that we can look at. But, anyways, diet. So the diet of a pill bug is basically any decaying plant matter. Uh, let me move myself back over here. So, if you find some leaves, like dead leaves on the ground, or just dead wood, like rotting wood or something like that, there's a high probability that pill bugs have been on it or are eating on it at that moment. Because they are everywhere. Uh, also, in live, uh, they also sometimes eat live plants in wet environments. I have not seen that very much, but I've also seen places where they talk about pill bugs being pests and stuff. So, maybe agricultural crops, like I saw strawberry plants and stuff like that, they might eat on and stuff. So they sometimes eat the leaves, shoots, and fruits. And I do know they like fruits. So, yeah. Uh, they also eat feces of animals. So they just break down stuff, kind of like worms would and everything like that. And animal flesh. So dead animals, I mean, they probably eat on it eventually. Basically anything outside, like this picture here, is just like literally everything they eat. I mean, like, they would eat everything in this picture that I see. They got some uh, dead green plant matter. They got some wood. Got some dead leaves. That might be some sort of nut or fruit there. I can't tell. But yeah, that's their diet. I mean, and they eat, like, I guess human food that would be out and about. And pet food. So. So, the habitat. This is one of the pictures I took from uh, my yard. <laughs> Uh, around our house, we have mulch, and mulch is a wonderful, wonderful place for uh, pill bugs, roly polies to like hang out. And this is underneath one of our flower pots. I don't know if you can tell if that's the flower pot, but I just like went outside, flipped over one of the first flower pots, and tons of these guys. Like you can notice, there's sow bugs. Like that's a sow bug, and then there's these pill bugs here. Sow bugs look a about the same, just they don't roll into a ball and they just stay flat. And it's feel, they look uh, softer, so. But anyways, uh, their habitat is temperate climates. So they can be like in areas that get cold and they can survive that, but they mostly like being in kind of warmer climates. And it has to be kind of moist because it, they need a high humidity. Uh, that's because uh, they use gills to uh, collect oxygen, so the gills have to stay moist for it to work, and they or they dry up. So uh, they want soil that's between 5.5 and 9 pH. Um, I don't really have a pH meter or anything like that, or I would probably would have checked my own soil, but I'm guessing it's somewhere between that because we have tons of pill bugs where I live. Uh, they li like to live under items, so logs, rocks, flower pots, leaf litter, mulch, any of those stuff, I almost guarantee anyone could probably find some. As long as you don't like live in like some desert or some frozen like 
escape or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Super adorable. This is what I would do when I was younger. I would just flip over flower pots of rocks and logs and I would just collect up. They're wonderful. So, behavior. And I, since I was talking about like them eating like feces late, uh, earlier, I had this picture. <laughs> so, so they never urinate, which we'll come to that later. But they do make lots of poop. <laughs> they also eat poop. They eat their own poop. And they eat their neighbor's poop. All poop is acceptable for eating. <laughs> and that is mostly because... Um, they use copper a lot inside their body. And they recycle the copper out of their poop and stuff. So they'll eat their and other pillbugs poop to get copper. Which I'll talk more about that later. But that's just a funny meme I saw. It was, it's pretty good. So okay. So to prevent moisture loss. They... Yeah, they prevent moisture loss by trying to stay places that are high in humidity and moist. And they use gills to breathe. So, that's the reason why they stay underneath flower pots and stuff like that. Because usually they're pretty moist underneath flower pots and rocks and stuff. Uh, they are terrestrial crustaceans. So, they cannot swim. They're not like crabs or like lobsters or anything like that. They, like, if you throw them in water, they drown. I mean. But... One of the things I want to highlight is they are crustaceans. They are not insects. Like I would have said when I was younger. <laughs> um, they are more active at night because it's not as hot and stuff like that. And they can just move around. Uh, when air temperatures increase, usually between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius, uh, they will group together. So let me go back to this here. Can you see how they're grouped together here and even down here? This is what I mean by grouping together. Oh, let's go back. So that will decrease the surface area, which will decrease the moisture loss. And you can see that some of them were still already rolled up into balls, even though like I hadn't really disturbed them very much. That also decreases surface area, which also decreases their moisture loss. So it's a like a double win for them. Um, they have sphere-like shape. Which, whenever they go into a ball, is called conglobation. Uh, whenever pressures or vibrations or they're disturbed or whatever, they will go into the ball. And also, like I said, it will lower their water loss by decreasing surface area. Okay, now let's go on to development. So, whenever the they hatch or whatever, like, they... There's a picture in the next slide that shows how they hatch. But anyways, when they hatch, they are under immature developed adults. So you can see right here, they are, yeah, they're like, they don't change really. They are immature adults. So they just literally just grow bigger. They don't change any. They, they're just really cute. <laughs> when they molt uh, their exoskeleton, their shell or whatever, uh, it's in two parts. So I have a molting picture here. Uh, let's, I'll move myself off the screen real quick. So anyways, uh, they will get rid of their top half first and then they'll get their bottom half off. And whenever they molt, they're also kind of vulnerable. So they'll, you don't want to touch them whenever they molt. So let's move myself back. Um, they will reach re reproductive maturity in about one year. That's not bad. That's not bad. And usually they live about 1.5 years to 2 years. Which, I've had some live longer than that when I kept them. Because I would collect up quite a few and keep them in a container. And I had some for like 5 years. Which, I mean, they would have been breeding within that time. But there were still pretty big ones that I remember from earlier on. So they can live for quite a bit of time. It's rare, but yeah. So let's move back on. Oh, also, I have this terrestrial isopod life cycle. So uh, made it, some of this stuff I I don't feel like is 100% correct. Uh, mating occurs three times a year in most females. That, I feel like, is probably in warmer climates. In my climate, they might not do that much. But uh, they'll carry eggs for four to six weeks. Uh, yeah. 
Um, oh yeah, whenever they uh, are hatched, they only have six pairs of legs. And whenever they do their first molt, then they'll get their seventh pair, their uh, last pair of legs. And then, yeah, they just grow and that's their life cycle. Not much different. So let's go on. So this is the reproduction. This is what I was meaning by the underside of them. So usually they will mate in the spring or when it starts to warm up. So right whenever a nice big warm step happens and it starts staying warm, they'll, they'll start. Uh, areas with mild winters, like where I am, uh, they may stay active all year round. Sometimes we have do have more harsh winters where they don't, aren't very much. But anyways, uh, usually they breed once in the northern hemisphere and two to three times in the southern hemisphere. That's why I said if you live in like a warmer climate most year round, they will like always be active. Um, but yeah. So they do not form permanent mating pairs. They just kind of go around and mate with whoever, I guess. <laughs> uh, females can storm, store sperm from multiple males and the sperm can be stored up to a year. So even if I was to collect some roly polies and like if I only had like female ones or whatever, they still could mate because they could have some sperm stored up already. So that's pretty nice. Um, now, here's where this picture comes in handy. So the eggs are held in the mara, mm -hmm, marasupium, marasupium? Yes. So that's this pouch right here. You can see the babies inside. The, oh, uh, if I move myself. <laughs> so anyways, this right here is the marasupium, okay? And you can see uh, the little babies inside there. Whenever I was younger or whatever, me and my brother would collect them and we would like flip them over to see which ones were had eggs or babies or whatever and it, it was kind of fun but you can see how their underside is like really soft inside that you'd probably have to worry about them being like hurt but their opposite side is pretty hard um it's a fluid filled pouch on the underside of the females and eggs are held for two to three months until they hatch and this can be like average number is about like a hundred, but it could be up to like 300 for certain species. So like that's an insane amount of babies to have at like one time. I, I didn't know they had that many, which they might always. So, so anyways, let's move on. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So this is where I like to go. Like I learned about most of these species and types from Reddit. So there's an isopod uh, subreddit. And this is where I first started seeing how insane the like pill bug species can get. Because first of all, whenever I first started on looking at Reddit for these, rubber duckies were like so, so terribly expensive. And uh, these are the rubber duckies right up here in the top corner. They are so cute because they look like they have a little orange duck bill and they got yellow heads and the backside's yellow too, but uh, they're just ter adorable. They're adorable. Uh, they are from Thailand, what I saw, and depending on the amount you get, they can be like from fifty to a hundred dollars. But whenever I first started seeing them being sold, they were much, much more than that. They've come down in price a lot. Uh, but they are probably, yeah, I'd say they're probably the most liked out of them. Like, everyone loves the rubber ducky type. Uh, there's Zebra, Armadillium uh, Maculatia. Um, yeah. It's these right here. They got, like, black stripes or whatever. Let me move myself over here. So we can look at their, their adorableness. So anyways, uh, we have the z Zebra ones right here. Uh, we also have Dairy Cows, which I think these are sow bugs uh, now that I look at them. Because they don't look like a pill bug. But, eh, they're isopods. I'll, I'll allow it. So, dairy cows. Uh, and then we have up here, which are magic potion, which are, I think, Japanese, I think? But they are uh, technically the same t type as the common pill bug. But you can see that their shell is, like, whitish clear. Kind of transparent. 
but they have more yellow in them. So they are, they're pretty cool. Uh, they're not my favorite. I think rubber duckies are my favorite. And the last one we go to here, the Thailand spiky. Oh, look at these guys here. They have so many spikes on them. Now these are like, I think they're called dwarf pill bugs or something like that. They are a lot smaller than any of the rubber ducky or zebra or dairy cow. They are very small. But these are still like, I feel like fairly early in their uh, making them. So, or breeding them, I guess. <laughs> so uh, the Thailand spiky here, they are extremely expensive right now. I saw $250 plus. And that's for, I think, like 10 or something like that. Whereas, like, Rubber Ducky, I think you can get, like, 10 for, like, 100 or something like that. So, like, these are a lot more expensive than the Rubber Duckies. So, possibly in a few years, we might be able to get uh, the prices down on these. And I might be able to look into getting some of these. Because I only keep the common pill bug right now. I keep the common ones I can find around my house. And I might eventually get some Rubber Duckies. I don't know. I went to an exotic pet show and I was looking around and there was one table that had pill bugs being sold and I had a little freak out moment. I was sitting there looking at them and my I did like an audible gasp and my mom's like, oh, what's the matter? What? Uh? And she probably thought, oh, I saw a snake or something like that because I don't like snakes and there were snakes there, but I, I was fine. But there was a table full of these pill bugs and there were rubber duckies there. I can't remember how much they were, but I sat there and told my mom, I'm like, these are the most cute isopods in the world. I mean, and I showed, talked to her about them and stuff like that. Like, oh, if I was sure I could have took care of them, I would have grabbed them. But I need to do some research, which this is part of my research, I guess. So anyways, uh, Thailand Spiky are, I think, my favorite looking next to Rubber Duckies. They're probably uh, about similar. But yeah, there's lots of other species too, but these are kind of the top ones, I would say. There are powdered types that are like powder blue and powder orange and stuff that kind of have like either a bluish or orange tint that are also kind of popular. So, since I was talking about the powdered ones, I think the next slide... No, never mind. Next slide after this. So, the range, okay? This map here, I feel like is not complete. This is the only one I could find. And... I feel like there's probably more around here, there, everywhere. Just everywhere on this map. But, I would say if there is a yellow dot on that continent... There are pill bugs probably along the whole continent. Like, unless it's, like I said, a desert or it's super, super icy cold, there's probably pill bugs where you are. Like, I guarantee there's probably pill bugs over here and, like, the Indonesia uh, and stuff like that. Probably Madagascar, too. I think I did see Madagascar one, so there should be some there. But, yeah, they are spread by humans. Their native range was Europe, it looks like. I, that's what I found online. And it was brought over whenever Europeans, like, traveled around the world. And, like, soil from plants and everything like that. And they're on almost every landmass except Antarctica. So, basically, they're everywhere. They're everywhere in the world. I guarantee everyone watching this video, if you went outside and you flipped over a flower pot, you could find pill books. I, there's a very high like, likelihood. Like I said... This, I feel like, is not complete. So, sorry. <laughs> so, whenever I was saying the powdered blue pill bugs, this is not a powdered blue. This is a, a roly poly or pill bug that has iridescent virus 31. Uh, it's an invertebrate um, virus. And it's also called uh, isopod iridovirus. And it does what you can see here. It turns the pill bugs blue. And some, like, I saw this, like, I saw a picture of these, and I'm like, oh, that's really pretty. Until I learned that it's a virus. And I'm like, oh, this pill bug is sick. Uh, that's not good. 
So uh, it's an infection, and what it does is it decreases the responsiveness of the pill bug. So like it won't roll into a ball as quickly, or it won't move as quickly, and really it just increases its mortality rate. So it die they die a lot quicker because of that. And you can tell by their bluish purple coloration, it might not be this dark. This one is like the darkest one I've seen, or one of the darkest ones I know is true. And that can be like a lighter shade or something like that. I have never seen a blue one. I have never seen one with uh, iridescent virus. So, luckily. <laughs> now, if I do find one, I'll probably take pictures and stuff, and you might see it online. But, yeah, it's one of those things you don't want your pill books to have. If you have one that starts turning blue like that, uh, definitely separate it from all the others. Uh, you don't have to kill it or anything like that. Just keep it separate. Let it live its life. And I mean, it, it'll it probably die pretty early. But they do look kind of pretty. Um, ah, yes, yes. So here are some interesting facts that I couldn't really find anywhere to add them on the PowerPoint. So, yeah, let's go ahead. So, kind of like I said before, roly-polies are not bugs or insects. They are crustaceans. And they use gills to collect oxygen. Um, they do not urinate. That is one that, like, blew my mind, okay? So, what happens is they will take their urea or their, like, urine or whatever, and they'll turn it into ammonia gas. And it will pass through their exoskeleton, their shell, and it'll just, like, exit into the environment. It's pretty insane, actually. Whenever I heard that, I'm like, got to be pulling my leg. But I saw it in tons of places. So, so here's another one. They will crystallize heavy metals inside their body. They're like copper, zinc, lead were the ones that like I saw most often. And this picture here is kind of shows that. So it's a pill bugs, and it says, "I improve soil as as harmless matter comes out of my butt." So it shows it eating lead and just like leaving just. I can't tell if those are flowers or what or whatever, but like they will eat heavy metals and they'll like keep them inside their body. I think they might incorporate them kind of into their shell a little bit, maybe. That was like one of my guesses. So because of this, they're used in an environmental research in polluted areas. So areas that have like heavy metals and stuff inside the soil, they will like I guess use. Uh, roly polies, pill bugs to research stuff, which I think that would be an awesome research project. I would love to mess with that because I just love pill bugs. Um, yeah, so breathe through gills, must live in moist environments. Said that before, and here's one. Okay, so you know how I said that they have copper in their bodies and they have to eat. They sometimes eat their own poop and others' poop to regain copper. So it's because their blood. Their blood contains, uh, so humans' blood um, are like red blood cells. They contain iron, but these uh, contain hemocyan, cyanin, which contain copper ions. So, kind of like I think horseshoe crabs have blue blood. They're also crustaceans, I think, but their blood is kind of looks blue, which I have never tried to uh, look at the blood of roly polies. I'm pretty sure if you tried, you'd kill them. It's it's sad. <laughs> but yeah, so their blood has copper in it and it makes it look blue. That was like a kind of interesting fact I saw. And I think that's all the interesting facts I have. Yeah. So anyways, that is my PowerPoint on roly polies. They are like insanely oh, ooh. They are like very, very cool. Very, very easy to care for, like uh, crustaceans or anything like that. I would recommend, like, especially for children and stuff like that, like for school projects and stuff like that, roly polies would be wonderful, wonderful. And I even keep roly polies now. <laughs> I, I don't as much, but every once in a while I'll like gather up a few and just keep them up. And yeah, it's it's fun. I can keep them for a couple years and they're fine. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed me just talking about roly-polies and hopefully you didn't get so bored out of your mind. 
Uh, I also have a short coming out for this too. So I don't know for sure if it'll come out before or after. But anyways, uh, look forward to more of these. I'm already working on another one that's going to be more of an educational video, kind of like this. And I'll try to put out a couple of these uh, every couple weeks, maybe. Don't don't uh, hold me to that. <laughs> I'll try to do them as much as I can because I do enjoy making these. And I'll try. I've got another book that I've. I finished my other book. And I've been kind of working on it. It's taking a while because I'm making these instead. But yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.